What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today in front of me I have the B-Link S2. Now one of the main reasons I wanted to get a hold of one of these is because it has the new Intel Celeron N4100 quad-core CPU. If you watch my channel, you know I got a major soft spot for these low-end CPUs, be it ARM or x86. Before we get started here, I just want to let you guys know that B-Link did send this over for review. I am not being paid in any way from B-Link. They simply sent the unit and I'm going to do a review on it. The S2 does retail anywhere from $179 to $199, depending on where you're shopping. I'll leave a few links in the description if you want to check it out. So first up on each side, there's not much going on. We just have some ventilation holes here. This is a passively cooled unit, so there is no fan inside of here. As for ports, we do get a good selection. Moving from the left to the right, we have our 12 volt power in, two HDMI 2.0 ports. Both of these will support 4K up to 60 FPS. We also have gigabit ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack out. Moving around to the front, we have one USB type C port, two USB 3.0 ports, and our power button. That's about it. It's a super clean little setup, and it definitely looks like a plain Jane box. If you're looking to add more storage, they did add a 2.5 inch hard drive bay on the very bottom. You can use a mechanical drive or an SSD. Both of them work fine. And inside, if you really want to go all out, you can add an M.2 SSD. Now it's time to go over the specs of this machine. For the CPU, we have a quad core Intel Celeron N4100 at 1.1 gigahertz. It does boost up to 2.4 gigahertz when it's needed. The GPU is the Intel HD 600 up to 700 megahertz with 12 execution units. Now this looks exactly the same as the old Intel 500. I'm not really sure what the difference is between the HD 600 and the HD 500 is. Four gigabytes of non-upgradable DDR4 2133 megahertz RAM. I'm really glad to see that they've started adding DDR4 to these small little PCs. For years they used DDR3. I think the DDR4 may help out in some performance areas. For storage, 64 gigabyte eMMC onboard, non-user upgradable, but they do offer an M.2 slot inside so you can add an extra SSD. And like I showed you on the very bottom, there's a 2.5 inch hard drive bay. I'm really surprised how well the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work. The antennas inside of here are very small, but it does support 802.11 BGNAC, 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz, and it works really well. I have my router on my bottom floor. I'm on the third floor with this unit. I pick it up perfectly. This box is running a fully activated Windows 10 home license. It's 64 bit. And for ports, we have dual HDMI 2.0. It does support up to two monitors. If you use an adapter for the front USB Type-C port, you can add three displays to this unit. Two USB 3.0 ports on the front, two USB 2.0 ports on the back, USB Type-C, and Gigabit Ethernet. It's got pretty much everything we've come to expect from small Windows PCs. Now it's time for a quick tear down. I just want to see what kind of a heat sink they're using in here. It is passively cooled, there are no fans, and I'm really interested in just seeing what's inside of here. Super easy to get apart. There are four screws on the bottom. You do have to remove the rubber feet, but the bottom comes right off with a couple little snap locks. I'm gonna pull the board out, and we have a pretty substantial piece of aluminum here to cool this unit. It's almost the full size as the board inside. I think it's gonna do a good job passively cooling this N4100. With all of this out of the way, let's go ahead and boot this thing up. I wanna test out some 4K video playback, streaming and native playback. I also want to test out a few games. I'm going to test out some older Steam stuff and some emulation. I'm going to go with Dolphin, the GameCube slash Wii emulator, and see if this tiny little CPU can handle it. Let's move over there now. All right, so here we are booted up with the B-Link S2. We have the Celeron N4100 at 1.1 gigahertz. Supposedly it does turbo up to 2.4. I've never seen it go that high. I've seen it go to 2.3, and it's never there for long. I'm wondering if B-Link maybe messed around with some BIOS settings before they set it in stone because I think this thing should at least burst up to 2.3 while you're playing a game like Overwatch and it definitely doesn't. It does have 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM and for the GPU we have the Intel HD 600 supposedly clocked up to 700 megahertz. Now in this video I'm just going to do a real quick test on a few different things. 
First up, 4K video playback using Kodi. I have a few files here. This is Big Buck Bunny, 4K 30fps MP4. Handles it just fine. Skip in a little bit. It's running buttery smooth, but there are tons of devices on the market right now that can play 4K video like this perfectly. I have one in my pocket right now. We're going to test this same video, MP4, 4K, 60fps. Now this is where a lot of these little Intel devices struggle, especially right here at the beginning. As we're scrolling down, we see these trees here. It is buttery smooth. This little box is definitely going to handle 4K pretty well. Either streaming it from online or playing it natively from an external hard drive or a NAS setup. So this is an MP4. 4K, 60 FPS. We're gonna move over to a little higher end video format. 200 megabits per second, 4K, HEVC, 10 bit MKV. It does take a little while to load these up. And at the very beginning, we get a little bit of stuttering, but it does handle them well as soon as they're loaded into memory. Now we're going to move on to the 400 megabits per second, 4K HEVC 10-bit MKV. All of these videos are on an external 1TB USB 3.0 drive plugged into the front USB 3.0 ports. So it's handling native 4K video playback pretty well. Let's see how it does streaming 4K on YouTube. All right, so here we are with YouTube. I'm using the Edge browser. If you use Chrome, you're gonna have hundreds of drop frames for some reason. Edge just works a lot better in this case here. Couple drop frames, not too bad. I mean, this is definitely watchable. It's not skipping around. This has a lot to do with your internet connection also. You need a beefy internet connection so it buffers for you. But with a box like this, you really shouldn't have trouble streaming 4K from Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube, as long as your internet connection can handle it. Next up, the Dolphin Emulator, testing out a GameCube game. So I'm really into these small Intel Celeron chips for emulation. This is one of the better ones that I've seen working here. If you have an i3, it's definitely gonna work a lot better than this. This is a small 1.1 gigahertz Celeron CPU with Intel HD 600 graphics. It's really not that bad for such a low powered chip. This is Soul Calibur 2 running in the Dolphin emulator. This is my go-to test here. This game is kind of hard to emulate. It's not the worst one, but it does give a lot of these little tiny chips a run for its money. I'm super surprised to see it running this well. The FPS is listed in the top left hand corner. This should be running at a constant 60 FPS with a couple drops here and there. If you had the FPS turned off, you probably wouldn't notice that it's running slower than 60. This is the best performing Celeron chip that I've ever tested with Dolphin. And I think it has a lot to do with that Intel HD 600 GPU. If they put the burst up for a little longer or let the burst happen, on the CPU from 1.1 gigahertz to 2.3, this should run at a constant 60. There are tons of games you'll be able to play with this emulator. Moving over to some Steam games, this is the original version of Skyrim, 720p, everything on as low as possible. FPS is listed in the top left hand corner. Now I actually did tear this down and put a fan on the huge heatsink inside of it, hoping to keep the CPU cool enough to keep that turbo burst up, but that's not the case here. It's pre-programmed in the BIOS from the factory not to burst during games. And I think that's a big letdown for a CPU like this because that extra 1.1 or 1.2 gigahertz that burst would add will definitely help out with gameplay. This game would be at a constant 30 FPS if they just let it happen. Not a very enjoyable experience at all. Half-Life 2, it's running very well, but this is at 720p, everything is on low, and I'm not outside yet. 
under extreme conditions with explosions and gunfire going on, I could see this dropping below 60, even at 720p on low. I also tried this at 1080p, low settings, around 40 FPS, but I'd rather play at 720p, 60 FPS, than 1080 30. I also wanted to test a newer game that a lot of people have been playing, which was Fortnite. Unfortunately, it just won't start up on the Celeron CPUs. I have about four different versions of the old 3 series and this new N4100. I cannot get Fortnite to launch. I can't get the Epic Launcher to even start up. Since I couldn't even get Fortnite to start up, I figured I'd try out Rocket League. We're only in the menu. This is on the lowest of low settings, 720p. We're only at about 10, 13 FPS. If we're seeing that low of an FPS in the menus, I know the game's not going to run well at all. So let's see how it works. Wow, this is really bad. An average of 10 FPS in Rocket League 720p, everything is turned off. It's on as low as I can go with this. So I completely understand that this is not made for gaming, but I have tested some older Celeron CPUs and even Atom CPUs that perform better than this one here, and this is supposed to be the new N4100. But this could be an awesome little emulation machine. I did test out PPSSPP. Everything works great except for God of War Chains of Olympus, Killzone Liberation, and Midnight Club Dub Edition. Those are the three games that the PPSSPP emulator struggles with, and this just won't run them at 60. It'll run Dreamcast, N64, SNES, NES. There are thousands and thousands of retro games that you could play perfectly on a box like this, even some GameCube games at 60 FPS, and the guys over with the Dolphin emulator are constantly updating so it's only going to get better from here. The burning question, should you buy a box like this? If you just need it for web surfing, document editing, and maybe some video playback, this would be a perfect box for you. If you want it for gaming and emulation, I would hold out a little bit. I actually just did a video on building a $200 gaming slash emulation PC, and it outperforms this by leaps and bounds. As much as I'd love B-Link to keep sending me stuff to review, it's getting harder and harder because all of these boxes are the same. It's like Android boxes. I've stopped doing reviews on those because there's only about 8 different CPUs out there. Every box uses one of those 8 CPUs. I've already reviewed them 2 or 3 times each. It's over. Soon as some new chips come out that are worth reviewing, I'll get a hold of them and I'll do some videos. Now they do offer the same box with 8GB of RAM and the Intel Celeron N5000. Hopefully I can get my hands on that. It does have a higher end CPU and GPU combination. It might perform a lot better than this. But then again, we might only get an incremental upgrade. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.